And we're live. We're live. Hey, everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are here with the one and only Christina Rodriguez. How are you, Dina? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, feeling very fuck the haters this morning. Uh, <laughs> kind of half awake. I took like three sips of coffee, so I might need to poop soon. But other than that, really good. Awesome. <laughs> I also forgot to mention, Dina, there's often a slight delay between what we're saying and what happens in the comments. Mm -hmm. so we'll often say something. Normally, it's like a dad joke from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, lol, that was funny. So... <laughs> That's normally why, hence why no one's realized that we're live yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then you're like, oh, no, I'm not. As long as, long as I get the immediate feedback from you, then I'll be able to know if I'm funny or not. And then I just like looked sadly at the ground like it didn't work. They don't like me. What am I doing here? I'm so anxious. Why? Um, one of the team over there on a set of drums just for the boom. Yeah, exactly. Just so, yeah, you definitely need drums to let you know when you're supposed to laugh. <laughs> I am slightly concerned that the chat may have frozen on us a little bit. Yeah, there, yeah, so absolutely. I, I don't know if suddenly it's just going to pop do out. Please let us know if you can hear and see us as usual, guys. Leave a cheeky comment, guys. Perhaps could we get someone up? in the office to just jump on and double check that we can be heard and seen. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Thanks. In the meantime, we are going to... Oh, Yay! good morning. Here we go. They, they're waking up. Everyone's. I <laughs> yeah. love that. I think 90 second delay. Actually, <laughs> massive delay. Fantastic. Um, yeah, this is going to be a really, really fun session. Dina, would you mind briefly kind of introducing yourself to anyone who doesn't know you and let us know what's in store for today? Yeah, so my name is Dina Rodriguez, also known as Letter Shop on the internet. Today we're going to go over pretty much my exact launch strategy for launching my first ever tangible product. Like I've made digital products before. I have hand lettering workbooks that actually teach you how to draw up styles like this. Um, and I taught classes, but I've never actually like tried to sell a t-shirt or an enamel pen or a poster. And there's some upfront costs that's involved with getting tangible products made. So they're really, uh, they freak me out. It's just like, I don't want to spend money that then like buy a product that no one likes. So luckily uh, when I released my first ever product, it sold out in the first week, which was, honestly a really big surprise for me <laughs> and like sizes were selling out within the first 24 hours my phone was exploding i wasn't quite ready for all that hype and then since then i've been producing products almost on a weekly basis now where we have about 12 pieces of apparel which is really really cool so but cool. yeah but my background is uh, i think i don't know i've been in this industry now for over a decade started as a graphic designer uh, i worked at like disney universal studios yeah, cool. went to uh, a really nice trade school called Full Sail University over in Orlando, Florida. They set me up pretty good. Um, their career advisors pretty much got me my first job at Disney. And then I quickly realized that corporate America just was not for me, mostly because <laughs> I kept getting fired. <laughs> it's like I didn't like them and they did not like me. So um, I quickly realized that freelance probably was going to be much more of a viable option. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I go through that realization moment at some point, don't they? Yeah, like they'll tell me what to do. <laughs> Authority, what's that? <laughs> I know, like I had a really like hard time, especially with Disney, because like that's like the most corporate job ever, where they're like, you have to wear pantyhose if you're going to wear a skirt or dress. Wow, I remember like, you said this on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it's freaking 103 degrees. Yeah. It's fucking South Florida here, people. I'm not wearing pantyhose. Who wears pantyhose? And plus, I'm like in my early 20s. I don't need to wear pantyhose yet. So yeah. like. Yeah. that pressure on me um <laughs> yeah and then i couldn't dye my hair i couldn't wear the clothes i wanted it oh just my God. It wasn't a good fit and then it's so far from where i am now where i like curse all the time my brand's all about like body positivity and it mental health and where it is. Yeah. there's a lot of cursing involved <laughs> and really talking about cannabis which is still very like what you smoke weed you must be like a really lazy piece of shit it's like actually i'm really really productive and i made a shit ton of money last year but thanks for your interest <laughs> but yeah so just kind of rocking it out making making cool stuff every day it's kind of intense that i can just do whatever i want yeah yeah and i'd love to kind of go over how you guys can do whatever you want to <laughs> 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 and with uh, just before we jump in with Letter Shop, you're basically pivoting that to be like an, um, a, a clothing brand, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went from like doing design services for clients, doing like hand lettering for like billboards and advertising and other apparel for other brands, branding. And then I'm like, but I like having absolutely no oversight <laughs> and just started creating my own products not too long ago. It's really cool. And you have your influencers now. 
Yeah, yeah I just started an oh. affiliate marketing uh, platform. They're called My Shop Queens. That just yeah. launched like two days ago. And we already have over 100 affiliates signed up, which is really cool. So cool. Uh, yeah. So if any of you guys want really cheap clothes, 40% off, and you want to get 10% commission to help to help me launch my brand, you can join our shop queens. And sorry, dudes, it's just for the ladies. <laughs> Unless you want to be a queen. If you want to be a queen, I I'm not going to stop you. We're, 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 we're going to count the entire team here. Gonna, <laughs> any people, it's going to be Matt and I just like, you know, stay <laughs> It's funny because like all my clothes are unisex, so that way we can have more like size inclusivity. So most yeah. sizes go up to two or six X mm -hmm. for, for our curvy girls out there, but they're unisex, so dudes could wear them. Yeah. It's just they're very feminine designs, but like whatever. I'm so glad you won that. Anyways. <laughs> so many t-shirts that I'm like, I you know you want that like baggy oversized t-shirt, but they don't go up that big. Or even when you got like get the men's, they still are just not. They're not right. They're not right. So that is an amazing range that you can go up as, as large as six. That's brilliant. Yeah, and also I'm a big girl, so I, I, it's really nice to uh, sell apparel that I can actually fit into. <laughs> that's and, it. It's more realistic. And, and that gets modeled probably instead of by like yeah, that's what like, I mean. we see, see everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I always had a problem with like sites like Redbubble or Society6 because yeah. they'd never be able to carry my size. Yeah. And it, I didn't realize how bad it had gotten until I had moved. Because I just recently moved from Portland, Oregon to a small town called Menominee, Michigan, right in the Upper Peninsula. We're not quite in the mitt. We're like next to the mitt. <laughs> we're like best friends with the mitt. Um, <laughs> and I was like cleaning out my closet. And I literally had an entire like 30 or 40 t-shirts that I'd bought in from like cotton bureau and like to support my other fellow like illustrators and then like shirts i got from redbubble and all these things in like a pile of like maybe you'll fit me one day yeah type of thing i have and that I, pile <laughs> yeah, and i didn't realize how bad it was like i'm like that's like a thousand dollars of shirts <laughs> just because like when they said it was a large it was really like a small <laughs> you know and i would just so and, and that sucks like you're buying you're spending money to feel bad about yourself yeah mm -hmm. i'm with you speaking of t-shirts like it's, it's a little insight into the office here but the other day i may have been a bit of a messy eater i spilled something down my front and i was like i can't wear this i tried to like rub it off and got washing up liquid and it ended up with this gigantic stain during the day during the day oh, you were, yeah. um, i didn't know this story. And, and so i was like guys like we've got to have some merch lying around so we fished around for a design cuts t-shirt we had one left in a drawer somewhere and i was like that'll be fine female it's medium right um i think it was female medium and it had shrunk and so <laughs> uh, apparently i looked like ross in that episode where yeah, you're like showing your belly <laughs> 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 that? did anyone take a photo no, and they never will. Um, so, you know, why I'm so excited for today is we hear from illustrators, designers, creatives all the time, and they seem to think it's impossible to do anything to a high degree of success apart from client work. Now, client work, they kind of understand that model, but when it comes to like selling prints, selling clothing, physical products, they hit this wall of like, I just don't get it, it's not possible. And you're someone who's rocking it in that space. So I think this session, and we're going to jump in in just a second, it's going to blow people away. It's going to be super valuable. And, and you're just a shining example of like it can be done. Yeah, for sure. It's really just trial and error. Like I've done a lot of things wrong, but now you don't have to. Isn't that great? You don't have to waste thousands of dollars like I had. <laughs> I totally failed that I never talk about. <laughs> I do love that when we have our guests on and they're like, I'm basically here to let you do it right the first time round. <laughs> it's like human guinea Yeah, I do love that. <laughs> And we, if anyone's got any questions, please don't forget to leave them in the ask a question section below. And uh, we will do some QA towards the end. So if you think of anything at all so that it doesn't get lost in the chat, just leave it below and we can go through it with Dina later. And if you don't have any questions, good, because I got a bunch and I want to hold the mic and get all my questions in. <laughs> also, I think it's fair to say that it doesn't have to be particularly business related, like we can get to know Dina a little bit more, have some fun questions in there as well. You don't have to, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm not struggling to think of anything. Mm -hmm. It could be, what's your favorite food? Like, you don't have to keep yeah. it too crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. And Dina, I believe you're also going to be sharing, you know, along the way, ways to kind of get more attention on your brand or your work on social mm -hmm. media and that kind of thing, because that all ties in, right? Yeah. Audience building is the first step. You can't just make a product and then sell it to nobody, right? Perfect. <laughs> well, Someone finds you. The, uh, the floor is yours, Dina. Yeah, take it, take away. it away. All right, guys, we're going to get into like lecture teacher mode here. I have an outline. I'm somewhat prepared to kind of and walk. papers at the ready. 
Yeah. So let's talk about social media and audience building. Cause like I said before, like, let's say like normal conversion rates for Instagram are usually about 1%. So that's pretty disheartening. If you only have a hundred followers mm -hmm. that maybe one person will buy something that's not sustainable. <laughs> so you definitely are going to need to focus on building that audience first, but mm -hmm. a lot of people have given really weird opinions on how to grow on social media. Some people, you know, like the buy likes situation, which never really works and you're getting in trouble or like post every single day, no matter what kind of content it is, but then you're just going to alienate your followers. It's really all comes down to consistency of message yeah. and, <laughs> and relatability. If your content is going by my feed and it doesn't make me feel anything, I'm going to scroll right past it. Yeah. And I think this is the biggest issue with artists is Sometimes we're focused more on like how pretty and how perfect an illustration is much more so than like the emotional <laughs> tether that we could feel before yeah. that work. Yeah. I always say things like um, it's, it's much more important the message behind your work than the skill it took to make it. Mm -hmm. And if we use examples like Adam JK, for example, he essentially isn't an artist. He doesn't even classify himself as an artist. He has hundreds of thousands of followers and he essentially has like chicken scratch handwriting and like, really simplistic doodles. But the reason why he has such a huge following and the reason why he sells so much products is because you feel something You're like, oh my God, I relate to that so hard. Or, you know, I'm sad sometimes, or I need a little bit more, more motivation in my life. Yeah. And so it's like all these artists that are spending like two weeks to make one piece of content on Instagram, and they're still wondering why they're not growing. It's like, that's not enough content. <laughs> like there's definitely somewhere in between, like, I don't want you to burn yourself out, but I also don't want you to be into like crazy perfectionist mode where you're like too, like you're like, I'm going to draw this line. Okay. I'm going to erase that line. I'm going to draw that line. I'm going to erase that line. This color, this color, this color, this color. And like, I've been there. I see you, <laughs> but usually when you get it to about 90%, which is like, it's good enough. That's usually fine. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of like walk you through some audience building strategies. So, in the marketing world, we all know like content marketing, free content in order to get people to pay for your <laughs> like content that actually costs money, whether that's a digital product or a tangible product. So we need to be able to create free content that's specifically made to attract your ideal customers. So obviously you need to kind of sit back and think, well, who are those people? And I'm thinking much more outside of like age, demographic, uh, how much money they make a year, but much more like what are their interests? What are their struggles? What kind of belief system do they have? What are their values? What kind of like curated Instagram pages do they follow? Are they meme pages or are they news articles? Are they fall? Are they much more interested in like the latest summer trends or are they more interested in like the football score? Like these are things that are really important because if you can kind of tether yourself to what those people are interested in, then you can create a following that's consistently having like a certain expectation of what you offer. Cause like for me, for example, I talk about very specific subject matters, cannabis, mental health, body positivity. That's what I'm calling my umbrella of specialty. Okay. Yeah. Anything that goes outside of that is kind of going to piss off my audience because they follow me for a very specific reason. Yeah. If I keep on talking about those same things, they're going to keep coming back. They're going to refer their friends. They're going to tag people in the comments and we're going to grow a lot more, the more niche down that I am. Yeah. But if I'm talking about like how much I love waffles <laughs> and then the next day I'm talking, I don't know, like let's say I'm talking about my favorite pair of sandals. It might seem a little off. Like yeah. I went from fashion to food. Not to say that the clarify, do you love waffles? Say again. Just to clarify, do you love waffles? I do love waffles. Me too. Yeah. I mean, they're hard. <laughs> Just thought that. <laughs> hard I mean, not frozen waffles. No, like, no, no. Go to a restaurant, have them like put a bunch of shit on them with yeah. like whipped cream. Like, can you add like another thousand calories to my carbs? And then those are the kind of waffles that I'll eat. The only ones you need. <laughs> yeah. So I had a coaching call recently this last week where uh, she was, I think, 16 years old, wanting to launch stickers for like a back to school sale. And she wanted to do these stickers that were all about like, uh, like things your teach, like think excuses you would give your teacher for like why you didn't turn in your homework. Oh, cool. like, oh, like, oh, my dog ate it. Like, oh, I wanted to get it done. But then my parents were fighting. And like, that yeah, was yeah. Bad. But like the majority of them were like, <laughs> really, really funny. And the kind of content she was creating was just hand-lettered quotes that are about anything and everything, quotes that she'd seen online, and there really wasn't anything, any sort of structure to it. Yeah. So I had to give her advice, like, okay, create free content. And she's like, well, I don't know, like, what kind of free content? I'm like, well, you want to be creating something that's called a quick win. A quick win is something that takes you less than an hour to make. Mm -hmm. That's all about the message. 
And like, it's literal only purpose is for social media. You're not putting it on a t-shirt. You're not putting in your portfolio. Yeah. It's just for you to connect with your audience. And then you're like, but what do I, but what do those quick wins look like? So for her specifically, as examples, like memes about summer are about to be over, right? Mm -hmm. Not knowing what the hell you want to do when you grow up, right? The impact of social media in your school, the fact that you want to be sleeping in and you want to do nothing and how much you're loving it. You know what I mean? <laughs> those are the things that are going to relate to that audience. So when you do come out with that product, they're literally the exact people who are ready to buy it. Yeah. So when you're creating content to build an audience, the number one most important thing is share worthiness. So when you're looking at your analytics, your insights on things like Instagram, I don't want you looking at likes. I don't want you looking at followers. I don't even want you looking at comments. I want you to look at how many times that post got shared to stories and was shared to their friends. So whether it was saved to a collection or they shipped it off, you only get this information if you have a business account. Highly recommend it if you're taking this shit seriously. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how you know, okay, this is something that people are relating to to the point where it reminds them of their friend or their cousin or their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Because it make, it make people typically want to see content that either is the version of themselves that they want to become yeah. or they're like, oh, that I, I'm, inter I'm interested in that same thing too. It's the same yeah. reason why we want to become friends with people mm -hmm. typically. So with all that being, <laughs> keeping all that in mind, we have to remember that 1%, right? So that's why we really need to be focusing on growth first and foremost. And keep in mind, if your content is share worthy, if it's on message, and this is not going to take like a week, this might take months. Yeah. And for me, yeah. Yeah. And for me launching my products, like before I started doing apparel, I was talking about cannabis for like, I don't know, four or five months before I released a shirt that was about cannabis. Yeah. Right? And so within that process of building that audience and just talking about cannabis, I didn't just sell any product. I sold the product that had data behind it. That was the number one shared piece of content on my Instagram. It was featured on so many other different kinds of like weed curated accounts. I was getting tons of inquiries for like stickers and posters and t-shirts of it. People were really excited about this piece of design to the point where it was getting knocked off and stolen wow. quite a bit. It was just stolen yesterday and I had to like send a cease and desist. So it's like, it's a very popular design. So I had an inkling that it would probably do well on yeah. like a, a product, right? Paul just said in the comments, love that t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, my past joints, not t uh, past joints, not judgment t-shirt, which is just a good vibes type of shirt. <laughs> it's, got, it's got two hands, like passing a joint. It's got some lettering and some beautiful sparkly smoke in the back. It's a pretty simplistic design, but it has a lot of powerful meaning behind it. Yeah. yeah. So when we're talking about quick wins, like keep in mind, it doesn't just have to be like a really rough, like hand lettered quote or something like that. It could be lifestyle. So like a picture of you, which I know is like, what, you want me to take pictures of myself? Yes, I do. Because it's much easier to like take a selfie than it is to like make an original piece of content. Yeah. You know what I mean? So hey, as your long face is not showing up anyway, right? No say one again. else has your face. Sorry, say again? No one else has your face, so that's original enough, oh, right? Hopefully not, right? <laughs> <laughs> Although I've, seen, I've gone to like the mall and I was like convinced for two hours that a girl looked just like me before I realized that there was like a series of mirrors. <laughs> it's like, like a vivid embarrassing childhood memory i have from like going to the swap shop in fort lauderdale <laughs> 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 following me, Mom. <laughs> she keeps looking at me um, <laughs> she stole my outfit and everything what the hell <laughs> <laughs> um don't worry if the comment section is a little bit quiet because we've always seen the most insightful talks on this show there people go completely quiet and literally just watch intently and take notes yeah so let's do an experiment i mean Case in point, I'm just taking okay, a bunch, I was a bunch of notes. Offer, do you want some of like actual notebook paper? Tom, no, I'm like I'm, I'm liking my post it <laughs> in a minute. I'm all about the post it's uh, I'm gonna save it for later. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so yeah, basically, uh, leave a quick comment while we have this pause and just say yes or something along those lines if you are finding this useful so far. Because seriously, there's been about eight different big, big value bonds that you can apply to your creative business and if straight you, away. And if you're taking notes as well. I can see if you yeah. people have already yeah, stop said taking notes and leave a comment, guys. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Squeeze. Get it, Jesse. <laughs> Dead human. Nicole. Yeah. And Robin, Nick, and Katie. Thank you so much for watching and getting crazy. Mm -hmm. All, right. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are getting value out of this. This is actually a part of a course that I'll be teaching on women of illustration in the next few months. So you guys are getting it for nothing. So. There you go, guys. <laughs> on the internet, guys. Um, 
Okay, so just getting into quick wins because I know you guys love examples. So lifestyle is important. And to show an example, like I talk about mental health, I have diagnosed anxiety and depression. I know it doesn't show, but I'm also highly caffeinated and medicated right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was having a really hard week and I hadn't left the house in a few days, hadn't showered. I was in one of my like mopey periods of my life. And the only time I left the house was to go to the grocery store. And I went up to the cashier and I told her I hadn't left the house in a few days and she gave me a smiley face sticker. This smiley face sticker like really brightened me up. I thought it was really cute. And fucking stickers are great, man. I love stickers. And so I put it on my forehead and I took a picture and a selfie in my car with all my groceries in the background and told the story about how I'd left the house and the sticker. And it, it did really well. So that's like an example of like, it was under my umbrella of specialty yeah. it was about mental health. And I didn't have to, and it took like two seconds to take the picture without really much thought. Cause like people want to support you. They want to give you money for your art, but it's so much easier when they know what you look like. Yeah. Cause I think we all can agree. Like it's way easier to remember a face than it is a username. Yeah. I find it more relatable as well. When you feel like you know the person behind it, like words are just words. But if I see you and, and get to feel your personality a little bit, then I can relate to you even more. Cause I'm like, wow, she's also really cool as, as well as having speaking so much sense, you know? <laughs> Yeah, because like I think people make the mistake of thinking that social media is a portfolio. It's not a portfolio. Behance, Dribble, those are portfolio heavy websites. Your website, that should probably have a portfolio on it of highly curated work. But your social media, this is where you should be showing the dirty, nasty parts of your life. This is the huge mistake. I want you to stop trying to pretend to be something that you're not and just truly honor who you are. Yeah. And these subject matters, these are all things that I, I smoke weed every day. I deal with mental health issues and I'm a fucking plus size woman. I typically wear a two X. I work out, I try to be healthy and I have the struggle with that. And I body dysmorphia and all these things. And these are the things that are a part of me that I feel comfortable sharing to the world. But also so, part of so many people, like I, I speak to so many girls, especially on the internet that it's like, they were all sucked in by this is what you must look like. This is how you must dress. This is what you must do. When in reality, do you ever walk down the street and see anyone that looks like that? No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Not where I live anyway. <laughs> Yet somehow people freak out, even with something as broad as that. They're like, oh no, it's too niche. It's going to limit me. It's like, mm -hmm. that oh, niche is wow. like hundreds of yeah. millions of people. Like, I know, right? <laughs> and also like, just because you were niching down doesn't mean that like, it's like, oh, it's only this niche club is allowed in. Like other people are gonna come to you. It's the same thing if you're niching down in your services that you're offering as a designer. And let's say you only wanted to get hired to meet hand lettered logos. You're probably gonna get hired to make t-shirts. You're probably gonna get inquiries to do mural design. Like you're gonna get other things. So don't think it's gonna limit you. It's just like kind of like having a really big like fishnet. You're gonna catch a lot of fish that aren't edible, right? But the smaller the fishnet, probably those fish are going to be a little bit bigger. They're going to take up more room in the net and hopefully pay off your fucking bills. You know what I mean? So that way you're not wasting your time with these people who want to pay you $20, $50 for a logo. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the big fish, small net. Um, yeah, in a small net like a harpoon. Where you're like, <laughs> yeah, like, harpoon. There you go. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for making my analogy even better, Tom. <laughs> um, Carl from Dead Human said you were actually my new hero. I think that was pretty much my reaction when we first chatted on video. Well, I remember uh, when yes, you came no. out and then you were telling us about Dina. Yeah. And then I was like, now I want to speak to her too. <laughs> like, it was amazing, the, the impact that it was like, we all just wanted to be your friend. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, no, we massaged that ego a bit more for you there, Dina. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I need to be massaged, especially my shoulders. <laughs> uh, they, they sore as hell right now. I keep begging my boyfriend. I'm like, touch me, please. <laughs> um, so... I think it's important that we show like pictures of ourselves, like we were saying, because it's easy to remember a face, yeah. but it's also trustworthiness, right? Like if I know what you look like, if I feel, if I'm friends with you in real life, I'm much more likely to support you. Yeah. It's just like why every single platform like Patreon or Kickstarter or anything that has to do with crowdfunding or anything like that, the first step is tell your friends and family. And it's why when you create, uh, you know, I don't know, like a Facebook for the first time, you end up inviting all your friends and family as the first people to follow you. Same yeah. thing with Instagram. So it's like, why would that be any different if once you're a professional and I like, and I'm not saying like sprinkle like fucking selfies all over your Instagram, that would be really weird. But I think like I typically, my rule of thumb is like once every two or three rows. Yeah. I think it's totally appropriate. And as long as it's not like, Hey guys, it's sunny. <laughs> as opposed <Okay. laughs> a little bit of meat and potatoes in there. I get to feel like I know you. Then I think that's totally 
awesome. And again, don't try to like make your pores perfect. Get professional <laughs> photography done. You don't need a photo some blur. <laughs> strength 10 on your face. Yeah, I literally like take a picture. I use an app called Snapseed um, and also Visco, which is V-S-C-O. I, I think they're both good. paid, but they're really good apps. And I just change the lighting a little bit because it's always fucking too dark, right? No matter what. I don't know how people get perfect lighting. I'm not a photographer. Mm -hmm. Just a person with an Android phone. <laughs> and you can get pretty good results with that. Cool. So quick wins, lifestyle. We have curated posts which is something artists feel like they can't do, which is really funny. Like every other lifestyle brand out there does curated posts. Like my work, my cannabis work, my mental health work gets reposted all the time, especially from lifestyle brands and other people. And it's the same thing, like lifestyle brands aren't afraid to like repeat themselves when it comes to making products. So like, why are artists not following those same rules? Why are we feeling like so weird about reposting our work? Like less than 10% of your audience even saw that thing in the first place, if you're lucky and 10% is really high. Usually it's more, more, usually it's more about like three to 5%. <laughs> like, <laughs> being honest. Like that though. Like they forget, they just hope that everyone's seen it. And then they're like, well, I've done that once, so I can't do it again. But you're so right. People yeah. didn't see it the first time anyway. People are not stalking you the way that you think they are. It's not like, <laughs> It's not like, like they see a post pop up, they're like, oh, must look at every post and double tap. Like mm -hmm. probably not. And also you're getting new followers every day. Mm -hmm. So like that post you made a month ago, there's no way your new followers even know that thing even exists. Yeah. And you know, make your job a little bit easier. You can post more consistently just by reposting. And not and only that, but because you're gonna be sharing the ones that did best. It, exactly. It the chance of blowing up a second time. Yeah. And what I was mentioning earlier about like trying to figure out what pieces of art would be successful on a product, you need to beta test them several times. You can't just post it once or oh, they posted well and then put it on the product. Like, yeah. no, 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 no. Because you don't know if that was a fluke. Maybe you just did really well for hashtags that day. Yeah. And we all know that hashtags are kind of like a, a weird gamble. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get like 20,000 people from hashtags, and but more than likely you'll get like five. Yeah. So I want to make sure that that content is relatable to someone without it being promoted by a big account that has a million followers without it being just you know luck of the draw yeah. so like i tested my pastor it's not judgment piece like four or five times before i actually put it on a t-shirt so that's why i was saying months yeah and as long as it's been more than like i usually have my rule of thumb is like 10 rows in between reposts yeah so that way it's, it's, it's yeah. Really just scroll away is usually yeah. what i like to say do you ever get anyone being like oh, dino i've seen this before uh, no one ever negatively. They usually say something more like, "Ooh, I love this one. Thanks for the reminder." Cool. Yeah. Because so like anyone yeah. out there who's like got that objection in their mind, like throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like the only time people are pissed is if you post like three like three posts in a row, or if you're repeating yourself every day, or if you're talking yeah. a product too much within a week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you spread that timeline a little bit out, like you're totally fine. Yes, as well, if the people that are following you are following you because you're relatable then it will be exactly what you said. I needed this reminder today or, you know, I related to this so much the first time that hell yeah to seeing it again. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if, if that's why they're following you, they're not going to care because they're going to want to see it regardless of when it was. Yeah. And it's the same thing can, can be said with like showing more of your process. Like if you just went ahead and showed the sketch version of everything you made and then the final version as well, you just doubled your content output. You know what I mean? And people, yeah. and like, don't think that people aren't going to dig the sketch. I mean, as an artist, I think anything that's in sketch form looks badass. It could be garbage, but you just <laughs> add a little fucking graphite to that thing. It looks fucking <laughs> sweet. <laughs> like I love, like today, someone just shared my pencil sketch of a piece. I think it was like Type Gang or something like that. And that's like a huge account with like over 200,000 followers and they shared my sketch versus the actual final static. So it's like, I think mostly people like sketches because there's so much potential. Yeah. You know, because it's not refined, because it's not perfectly vectored in. Yeah. 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 Guys, just for a second, um, Angela just said she cracks me up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so put, put the pencils and pens down for a second, guys, and leave a comment if you find what Dean is talking about freeing. Because again, all I seem to hear and see from creatives every day is this kind of rigid, limited belief system where it's like but i can't share that it's not perfect or i can't do this i can't yeah. do that and when we had you on the honest designer show we talked event about this where it's like essentially just giving less thoughts for example i don't care less yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like you don't need to have a dedicated color scheme to your instagram <laughs> you don't have to complete a complete like a new 12-hour piece or portrait in order to get popular you don't have to write five paragraphs in your captions. 
You don't have to do live streams if you don't want to. You don't have to, there's really no rules. And I think the mistake that we find is we list it, we're so hungry for content and education, especially as a, as a new creative, that we do it, we like pay, like it's like, it's a little bit too structured. Like, oh, so-and-so told me to do X, Y, and Z, so I have to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. If I don't, then it's not gonna work. And it's like, that's bullshit. There are so many different ways you can make money. There are so many different ways you can get popular. There is no rules. All creatives can do is be like, this is what worked for me. If you want to try it, great. But if it doesn't work, don't fucking do it. Try something else, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I find that is so freeing because I definitely made the mistake of listening to people's advice a little too harshly where it actually hurted my self-worth and more importantly, my bank account because I thought I was in the right. And it was like, like things like, oh, only good designers present one concept. So I felt like shameful if I were to offer two concepts to a client. Yeah. Like stupid shit like that. Just like, okay, <laughs> like who said that? Are you the God of design? No, you're not, go away. <laughs> my, my friend Jacob Cass, I think he does like nine concepts. Aaron Draplin does about 58,000. And other people do one, like there's no rules. That's what I'm yeah. saying, they are only going by what other people are doing anyway. So like exactly that, who are you God? Like no one's <laughs> making the rules really, yeah. who is making them? Mm. We have mm -hmm. to make them for ourselves. Don't just do what someone else told you. Yeah, and that's why I think it's important for designers <laughs> to like, yeah, like make sure <laughs> make sure that you're not just following your peers in direct competition. Because remember, you're trying to attract everyday consumers that have money. Artists are the hardest people in the world to impress. I guarantee you, every single one of you that are here, you've been to an art museum. I can make that. You've seen a, a restaurant menu. I could do better. You know what I mean? You're snobs, and that's okay. <laughs> I've paid $100,000 to be a snub, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so much more, I'm sure. But at the same time, like, why are you trying to impress the people who aren't going to pay you for your t-shirt, for your enamel pin, for your poster? Yeah. You want to be trying to attract everyday consumers, and those people think stick figures are cool, you know what I mean? So, you know, the bars, like, take the pressure off, get rough, get personal. And as a, and I get this question a lot, like, Dina, do I have to, like, talk about really serious issues in order to be popular? Like, of course not. You could talk about how much you love Stranger Things. You could talk about yeah, how much you love food. It doesn't have to be this like super <laughs> emotional thing. As long as it's relatable, that's it. Like when you make friends in like the high school cafeteria, usually you bonded. Like I made friends because we all like to play the game magic. You know what I mean? Like that had nothing to do with like feelings. So, like, oh, we all like to play like basketball or we were all in the same class and had that same interest and really liked like really deep history. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be this touchy feely thing. have things in common. Exactly, things in common. So I, I'm trying to like speed this process up a bit because I'm like, I'm like, I'm still on the first like, <laughs> bullet. We it, yeah, it's because we want to go so deep on everything. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, so we talked about quick wins. And then I was to give you guys a couple social media tips. I think what's really important is, again, just take the pressure off yourself. Figure out what your posting schedule is. And I like to call this like your posting cadence. This is what you post right? The subject matters, your umbrella of specialty and how often you post mm -hmm. and then what those posts actually look like. So for me, here's some options of posts, right? So we have the process, whether that you work on your iPad, you want to take a sweet fucking flat lay if you're working on your iPad or it's a static image, which is like the final PNG or JPEG that you export out of Procreate or Photoshop. That could be the static sketch if you want. You can be the final static image, right? Because final static images typically get shared the most, much more so than process. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get lucky but usually it's the final static. Uh, we have lifestyle photography, which is about you, whether it's like your hand in the photo drawing or it's an actual picture of you having to do with your umbrella of specialty. Yeah. Now we have other things like we have user generated content, which is UGC for short, which I'm just gonna say UGC from the, from the, the next however long we're talking. <laughs> this is like, you know, if you've ever made anything ever and a customer takes a picture of it and talks about it on their Instagram, that's free content. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Like, give me that shit. I didn't have to work for it. You know what I mean? That's why I have an affiliate program and I have all these people and essentially models that are taking pictures of them in my clothes and I don't have to pay them. Like, it's just, that's just free content that I get to add to my feed. And we also have curated content, like we mentioned earlier. Like, it doesn't have to, if you're an artist, then maybe don't curate other art, but there's still memes. There's nothing wrong with sharing a, a mean meme, you guys. Uh, or just like a, a screenshot of a tweet or something. Like, there's no rules here. <laughs> um, and then what else? I think I feel like I'm missing like 50,000 options here. I didn't write it down. Is there more? There's more, isn't there? Yeah. So one is um, I'm a big fan of the one where you let people vote. So if you've got four designs, you put it in a grid and say mm. 
in the comments, like pick which one's your favorite or yeah. something like that. Yeah, for sure. I think especially when you're product building, it's really important to have your community be a part of that decision making process. Yeah. Even if they really don't have a say in the decision making process, but you make them feel like they do. <laughs> like it's like, hey, which concept do you like one or two? Uh, which colors do you like one or two? What kind of blank? What kind of t-shirt? What kind of print? You know what I mean? There's so many options. So that way, if they feel like they had a, first of all, people have questions. Because like sometimes people, or else you're only going to get comments like thumbs up emoji. This is great. Because you're not giving them any context to. Yeah, the they can actually get involved. Yep. Yeah. And that social media tactic isn't going away anytime soon. Like ask your audience a question. They'll probably give you an answer. Like yeah. it works for a reason. Same thing with like tag your friend. Like my yeah. boyfriend is in charge of my social media account for women of illustration, which is really funny. <laughs> and um, I, it's like pulling teeth for him to be like, tag your best friend. Like in this photo, if it's like two girls holding hands or something. And I, we just did a post like that the other day and it is the most popular post we've had in the past two months. Yeah. It's like, want to involve their friends they want I to make it all the time friends. i'm like tagging them everybody <laughs> it's like the modern greeting card essentially it's like tagging and sharing memes and art and all that stuff with your friends yeah sure. but it's free <laughs> <laughs> all right so we've gone over some social media tips we're figuring out okay like this is what kind of subject matter should we be talking about how often should we be posting there's other things you guys could be doing little things like you know, if you're trying to attract everyday consumers, make sure you're using more like subject matter hashtags than art hashtags. So I never want to see you using like hashtag art, hashtag illustration, because yeah. you're not trying to attract artists and illustrators. You're trying to attract everyday consumers. So if your thing has to do with cannabis, then use hashtag cannabis or hashtag yeah. cannabis or hashtag Kush Queens or hashtag Ganja Girls. Can we, I, I know people love like the actionable examples. So can we run like a quick, um, three hypothetical examples where SJ gives one, I give one, and you give one. Sure. People probably get it with my cannabis, but I mean, my example, imagine if you're doing stuff um, for like proud parents of newborn babies and doing all cutesy stuff around that. You wouldn't do uh, like say the RT hashtags or hashtag illustrator. It would be like hashtag newborn, hashtag proud parent, that kind of stuff, hashtag right? new mom. New mom. Exactly. <laughs> hashtag mom life. Yeah. Hashtag stop crying <laughs> uh yeah well everyone knows that i'm just into makeup massively so i actually have an instagram account which i never use that i'm like obsessed with makeup so and like I makeup to, or like yeah that. so i i did the typical let's just google the popular hashtags that people should use and that's the way that i did it because i was like that's what everyone else is doing that's what i should be doing <laughs> like a trick like if you already have a popular account then totally use a hashtag that's been used like 60 million times but if you're like like most people like under 10,000 you yeah. typically want to stay within a decent range so you can easily like you know type any hashtag into Instagram and it'll tell you how many times it's been used so I usually recommend anywhere from like if you have a really really small following then 50,000 to 500,000 times used if you have like a couple thousand followers then I think it's fine to bump that up to a hundred thousand to a million but anything that's been used more than a million times, you're just going to get buried. You're fucking yeah, wasting time. Sure. Can you get lucky? Of course you can. <laughs> Anything's possible. So I think it's fine to be like, okay, if you have to use some arts tags, make sure they're what we call long tail keyword tags. Like instead of it being like hashtag lettering, do like hashtag iPad lettering or hashtag procreate lettering. Something that's a little more descriptive, that's less competitive. It's the same thing when you're doing like SEO research for your website. You're much more likely to rank for things that are more detailed and again, more specific to your niche. Yeah. So I think it's fine if you want to put like three or four of those like RC hashtags, if you gotta do it, I understand. Especially if you show the process, you should talk about the process and the materials that you use, all the things. Um, and then when you have like the static images, then it should be all about the subject matter. Yep. And yeah. Oh, and right. and I'm, I'm running out of space here. <laughs> she offers you a notebook, dude. I know, it's literally here. <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I'm posted obsessed at the minute. My whole desk is covered in them. <laughs> it's like, this is organized chaos. It's my organized chaos. Mm -hmm. exactly. There's some like gazillionaire walk around who invented these, which is crazy. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ding! I love, I love those too, y'all. Yeah, get some get some real ass paper. Real paper. All right. What? I'll I'll what? leave it at that for social media. So, uh, while Dean is bringing up the next section, guys, we did this I think on the last call, and it was kind of fun to see your creativity. Leave a response to what you're thinking of this session so far, but in emoji form only. 
<laughs> want to see all the emojis. <laughs> all right, bring on the poop emojis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely no poop emojis. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i i can give you guys social media tips for days if a lot of this stuff is relating to you but you're really having a hard time coming up with like examples or like okay i get the like why this is important but how do i do it yeah. i am available for coaching sessions so if that's something you're interested in, send me a dm i'll send you a link we can book a session i feel like every guest we have on here as soon as they start talking about social media me and tom are like let's just talk about that for the rest of the <laughs> i can talk about like that's usually what we talk about it's usually like how do i find my niche how do i grow on social media how do i curate my portfolio to attract the exact clients i want we just to feel like everything is about social media right now like yeah. it has been for a while but still is like everything is about mm. yeah but how do i get big on instagram do you know what i mean it always comes back to mm -hmm. that at the moment <laughs> but um yeah guys do um dm dina because She's very, very good and very affordable for the value she offers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would not just say that to stroke where you go. Like, yeah, Dustin's paid me twice for coaching. Exactly. Oh, cool. like Which makes me feel good. <laughs> it's like, oh, Dustin, you're going to pay me for coaching. That's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about audience building. We can talk about social media for days. I do have a YouTube channel that has a bunch more content on there if you want to check it out. Just Google Dina Rodriguez and you'll find me. All right, so let's talk about products. That's the whole reason we're here. Products, okay. So <laughs> you've done all the research, you've built up the audience, you're ready, you want to make a product, but you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Okay, <laughs> so a good way to make a product if you don't have a whole lot of like money to invest is Printful. So uh, even though I talk about this all the time, a lot of people don't know that every single one of my products are printed and fulfilled by another company. So Printful is really amazing. They don't sponsor me, even though they really should, um, <laughs> is like Printful connects to websites like WordPress and Shopify and Squarespace, which is what I have. And so you can have a shop that's on your own platform because that's the one place you control. Highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you can you know have whatever pictures you have you want, um, have descriptive uh, like paragraphs and bullet points about your products. Someone buys it and then Printful gets a notification. They go ahead and they print it and they fulfill it for you. Now, this is going to be a much higher profit margin than using any of those other print-on-demand sites like Redbubble, Society6, Design My Humans, all those places, where you're making like a nickel <laughs> like or a dollar. Like I have a large audience and I'm lucky to make $15 a month off those platforms. Do they deal with, if you get any like order queries, does that come back to you or do they deal with that as well? If they're like, um, my order yeah, so, I, so customer service, they all just email me directly like, uh, like, oh, my thing arrived damaged or something. Yeah, yeah. Print nice so if the customer just takes a picture let's say maybe just got fucked up on the way there because shipping is not something you could always count on yeah print will go ahead and send send them a new product with with no charge yeah, cool. did you mention what's the margin like these okay so margins are whatever you want them to be so typically if you have like a ringer shirt like this like this one i'm wearing right now the cost might be about 12 dollars, depending on if you have a graphic on the front and the back like this one nice <laughs> So obviously this one's a bit more expensive because it has two graphics, but usually it's about 12 to $15. And I sell these shirts. I sell them for really high for a premium. I sell them from anywhere. It's from 30 to $45. Okay. So it's quite, a, quite a bit of profit margin. So you pay print for $12 as a flat rate and then you choose whatever you want to add. Yeah. And the good news is it's like the best gambling ever. Like you only pay print full once you've sold a shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if someone checks out of my uh, of my website and they pay thirty five dollars, I get that thirty five dollars, and then Printful will charge me the twelve dollars to get the shirt printed. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like cash flow in the world. Yeah, it's like the best. I, I was like gambling, like instead of like you spending money to maybe get it back, it's guaranteed money back. Mm -hmm. I just said it's one hundred percent cotton on the, on Printful. They, they do have caught they have so many options yeah. yeah they have they even have once they officially launched plus size leggings i was like yes <laughs> yeah yeah and they have apparel they have like fucking baby clothes dog clothes posters mugs like all the things and they're all really good quality. That's and, so cute. And, and they've been good to deal with so far yeah i i, I really recommend them yeah um i oh, think they're not just in the states they, no they, they have they're in the uk as well okay um this could not be better timing even the team don't know this, but I was talking with uh, one of my business partners recently. We're finally going to push DC merch. And so this is like perfect because I've been trying to find the best people and it sounds like Printful could be that. That is really good, yeah. So this is gold. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Everyone's like, Printful, Printful, Printful. <laughs> <laughs> printful, you're welcome. I'm sure. Yeah, Printful. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, sure I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, Dina, if they got like an affiliate program, 
hit me up with a, a link they, before I go. Yeah, sign. they do actually. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, you're that sweet finish before we go sign up. <laughs> So I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so I think it's a really good option. Of course, if you want to do something like, let's say you have a bigger audience, let's say you try Printful and it's working for you and you're building your audience, then I think it's totally awesome. Okay, like, okay, like start printing the shirts yourself and getting them screen printed or start to, you know, go to a local printer and get posters made because obviously $12 per shirt is still pretty expensive. Uh, like normally if you were going to get like 50 shirts screen printed, they'd be anywhere from three to $5 per shirt. So like you are missing out on profit margins. And the reason why my uh, clothes have gotten more expensive over time is because I'm doing wholesaling now. So I have to make sure that those wholesalers are making at least a 50% profit margin and I'm making money too, right? Do you know on Squarespace was printful, but it works with Shopify or WordPress? Yes. All right, <laughs> let me find this affiliate link real quick and then we can keep talking about printful. <laughs> So the good thing about this affiliate link, guys, is if you use it and any sales you make in the next six months, I get a commission. And it comes out of uh, Printful's cut, not yours. Oh, nice. Right. We're just, we're having some heat issues here. I yeah, it's what we're doing, but. <laughs> I'm like using my stand-up desk for a change because I got a Fitbit and I'm like all about it right now. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's cool. well, I, hopefully it won't interfere with the audio too much, but I think otherwise in the next 15 I'm minutes, like, we're, we're just going to slide off the sofa. <laughs> like very. I'm going to change into that shrunken t-shirt, Tom. Like I'm cool with it. <laughs> my, my face is slightly going the same color as my dress. So I'm like, woo. Okay. I got you. I, I got feel like you. you guys just have like a glow about you. I am also uh, nearly six months pregnant, so oh, I'm okay. Pregnancy thing. I was just thinking you use really good foundation. Pregnancy thing. You look okay. pathetic. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, so we've got printful. We've got like a way to fulfill the orders. What is up next? Okay, so product launch. So when you're about to release this product, just because you're using printful doesn't make it any less special. Right. You can still be like any other shop and be you can limit the like the quantity, like just because you can just print shirts into affinity doesn't mean you necessarily should. And the good part when you're launching a product is you need to create FOMO. Fear of missing out is a really, really big deal. Yeah. Like, and building up hype is really, really important. So the, the big success behind my T-shirt was because I built up a shit ton of hype. So I did the beta testing. And the second I wanted to start a store, I told people about it. Right. I, sh I, you know, use mockups of the T-shirts and what they would look like. I told people, OK, I'm, I'm going to give my newsletter first dibs on this product before I release it to the public, because people are much more likely to get excited about a product that they can't get which is really interesting. It's like the reason why, like, you know, if you're going to buy concert tickets, like usually yeah. like they tell you months in advance before the tickets are available. That's for a reason. Yeah. Because they're trying to build a pipe. If you just go, hey, here's this product, buy it. And you haven't told anybody about it. You're not going to get very many sales. Like you have I, to build it up. I presume um, by FOMO, you were talking about by a limited run. Yeah, FOMO, there's so many options. So like you could do a limited run, like limited available. You could do a limited sale or like, oh, the first 10 people, the first 20 people get it $10 off. Yeah. Right? You could also do things like a surprise bonus. Like the first 50 people get a, a bonus sticker or a bonus enamel pin. Yeah. Or, I also feel like, well, you have to sign up, like sign up here so that we can email you when it launches. Otherwise you won't get it yeah. straight away kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. On Instagram. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind that Instagram went down the day that I launched this product. Oh, yeah. Did it? I remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. So thank goodness I had went ahead and put in place like, hey guys, sign up for my newsletter to get first dibs. Yeah. Because the day before Instagram went down, I went ahead and I shared like a teaser image, which was just like the back of a shirt with my letter shop logo on the back. Like, hey guys, this shirt's coming out tomorrow for the public, but just for newsletter, they get it first. And keep in mind, there's a limited quantity, so it could sell out before you even get access to it. Yeah. And that prompted a lot of people to sign up for my newsletter. Yeah. So what I did launch, two sizes sold out in the first 24 hours. Uh, the mediums and smalls, all the skinny people got first dip. <laughs> <laughs> all the fat people are like, don't worry, that 2X and 3X are still available. <laughs> So just eat more, then you'll be able to get a shirt. Um, <laughs> just feel yourself a bit more. Um, so creating that kind of hype and FOMO is so important. So like I think like a week before you launch, talk about it. Three days before you launch, talk about it. The day before you launch, talk about it. And not just in your grid, but also in your stories and all your other social media platforms, all the things. Now, another really good part about doing a launch is planning and incentivizing people to talk about their purchases. 
This is so important. This is social proof. It's really hard to get people to like trust you, especially if you've never released a product before, unless there are already other people saying that your product is cool. But like, how do you make that happen? There's a couple different ways. You can go ahead and like, if you're using Printful, for example, you need to get a sample. They give you 20% off any samples and you also get free shipping, which is really nice. So you can test out the fabric, make sure you didn't put the print too high, which is what I've done several times. Eventually I'll learn my lesson. I don't know why I have it. And I'm like, it just looks low enough in the mock-up and then I get it and I'm like, damn it. Like I did it. Um, so you know, get a feel for the quality, especially if you are going to be the one modeling in your clothes. Yeah. You want to make sure it fits you appropriately. I keep buying shirts too big in a lot of my photos. Uh, actually, the photo that you guys used for this one, I bought it a size too big, so that's why there's a big knot <laughs> in it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I lost weight. I guess that's cool, but damn, I need to order another shirt. Now. I sign yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, uh, it's nice to have clothes that make you feel good. Um, so that way you can get you know feel for the quality and stuff, and take your own pictures. Um, but what you could do is do like a free beta test, like take your most loyal customers or like say followers, the people that you just see pop up in your DMs all the time, the people who are constantly commenting on your work, you know who they are, right? There's also programs that you can Google to figure out who exactly those people are as well. Send them a free sample and have like a thing like, hey, I'm going to give you this free product in exchange for a shout out. And these people don't have to be influencers, okay? They don't need to have like 100,000 followers. They can have like 20. It doesn't matter. It's just social group. So that way, the day you go live, they're going ahead, they're sharing through their stories, pictures of them wearing the shirt, people who are ordering the shirt that day, taking screenshots of their purchase orders, all the things. So that way, when you're so that way, the world who's looking at your stories, because you could just share, you know, if anyone if you're tagging a story, go ahead and share that, are gonna be like, holy shit, these are gonna sell out. Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to miss out. There's only, like, and then especially some people are even better, like only six left, only five left, only two left. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so throughout that day, I was, you know, I was like, hey guys, the first two sizes already sold out. Again, keep in mind that Instagram was down. <laughs> so it was mostly like the day after people are getting all these notifications. And then I really, and then it only took a week for all of those shirts to be totally gone. Absolutely. And I've had to reorder them twice. So for two oh, different ones, and then I even have it on a sweatshirt, and then I also have it on a black blank as well. <laughs> Did you say you've now got twelve? Uh, twelve total, I think. Yeah. Like different designs, or different designs, yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I'm so a big fan. Not of a first run of it. At that point, if we're looking at the numbers, how many uh, people were in your audience? Just to give people an idea, because. Oh, I've grown so much. Inspiring, but I want people to manage their expectations. They're not going to sell thousands of t-shirts. Like yeah. Forever. Um. Well, okay, so let's keep this in perspective. So I, I've grown really a lot since I launched that shirt. So I think I've grown about 20,000 followers in the last three months. Mm -hmm. Um. So maybe about 30. I had 30,000 followers, I think, on Instagram. But on my newsletter at the time, the people who signed up were only maybe about like 200, 300. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you, did you market to your main newsletter um, for them to sell out that quick or only that mini list? Initially? Just that niche list. Yeah. Right. Okay. But there, I mean, literally you could have, and this is quality over quantity people, we talk about this a lot on this, uh, on this segment. So you could have an email list of 50,000 people, but maybe only 200 of them really care about right, that man, thing. Okay, Whereas on this yeah. list, that's 200 people being like, I am willing to give you the monies for that specific thing. Like they, they couldn't be more targeted. So. Active in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for a link, and I'm like, here's the link to my newsletter. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got we put your website up on the uh, the button as well. Yeah, yeah I've linked up your Instagram because I didn't know what, what your sort of preference was, but we can put that, that link. Up. Oh, okay. So, so um, just to give people the nuts and bolts a little bit more, so you you had thirty thousand people on your Instagram. You then posted on your stories, like swipe up, you put it in your bio link. I'm guessing, and you were saying this is coming soon you've loved this design, I'm making a t-shirt, go sign up on this landing page, I guess it was, sign up, mm -hmm. notified when it launches and, and when the t-shirt's available, and then 200 people went and did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a lot of people, even though I, I have several newsletters that are quite big, but you have to keep in mind that I came from a different audience structure. I went from like only trying to attract other artists and creatives with my educational resources to now everyday consumers, and that change was only like a couple months old. 
So like this newsletter was brand new and there wasn't a lot of people on it when I first started out. So it was essentially like starting from nothing really, because yeah, some artists still got carried over and some people still follow me. But like the day I started talking about cannabis, I lost like hundreds of followers, I think over a thousand. So it's like, it, like I changed audiences. So of course I lost people, but because I was so targeted and niche and obviously there's a lot more like everyday consumers out there that smoke weed than like artists. You know what I mean? Like, here's the artist pool. Here's like everyone else in existence. You know what I mean? It's like a way bigger audience. Um, so even though I lost a bunch of followers, I've gained tens of thousands. Did you um, just wake up one day and just kind of think, screw this, I'm just going to like be completely honest from here on out kind of thing and, and just talk, real talk about all the things that I do? And Yeah, I think, I mean, it was definitely like a slow progression. Like it was kind of like, okay, now I'm going to do baby steps. So I was definitely one of those lettering artists that did, all those stupid dream big work hard pieces that are like bullshit platitudes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then it was like, okay, I'm going to start saying fuck in my work. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start talking about my mental health. Like I'm going to start talking about weed. Oh God. <laughs> and then I just started doing it consistently because okay. even though I was alienating some people, I was helping and making people feel more less alone yeah. and like, like they, like they had an extra friend they didn't have before yeah. than I ever had in my entire career. And did and you have to the point where you thought, oh, maybe I won't do this? Or did you just think that's it now, I'm just gonna commit and, and pass? I think I only went like, oh, like at the very, very beginning, but now I'm, I'm totally comfortable. Yeah. I think it's cause I've, I've gone through like the, the ups and downs of the followers and everything. And unless I do something really fucked up, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think we'll, I'll probably be okay. fine. Now there's just like a certain expectation of consistency now. Yeah. But yeah, definitely that day of the launch was pretty like a huge signifier for me. Like, oh, you need to make more fucking t-shirts. Like <laughs> I like looked at my phone. I made $1,300 in the first like few hours, like the first three hours, which was like would have taken me two weeks for client work previously. And that's profit, not just net. So I was just like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 1300 in profit. Yeah, 1300 in profit. So yeah. I was just like, this is fun. <laughs> like, okay. Because I thought like that was only possible with digital products where it's like, oh, you're selling in your sleep. But with Printful, it's essentially the same fucking thing. Yeah. I love that from Carl in the comments. My two favorite things, the word fuck and weed. Epic. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> we aim to please on the show. <laughs> yeah. They're my favorite things too. Um, but yeah, so those are some things that I think can really help. And like, definitely like, baby steps like don't you don't need to have like 20 things in your shop in order to launch your shop i launched my shop with one thing and it sold out like i think your goal as a product creator is to create a product and then sell out and then create another product and then sell out and then create another product and sell like the, the goal is to, is to sell out products rather than yeah. having nice stuff that some people want some people don't yeah like there's a couple designs that i still get asked about that i made like two years ago that people are like oh would you make this into a shirt would you make this into a sticker i'm like no you missed it <laughs> so, so how does it work now if you're selling 12 designs do you open up one sell out or have you got all 12 now selling perpetually um all 12 are selling perpetually there's three that are going to be retired in like a week or so Just and the the bottom performers i'm guessing yeah like the lowest performers exactly um like this one didn't do as well as i wanted to there's two versions of the shirt one with the big fuck the haters on the front and then this design on the back and then another one with just this design on the front and it, I spent so much time on it. I beta tested it like three times and it still wasn't performing well, but I didn't, but I fucking put it on a product anyways, because I'm a cocky asshole or something. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I'm like people will like fucking buy it. It's fine. No one, like three people bought it. So it's like this shirt will be retiring. Um, but it's great. I guarantee there's people here right now who want that shirt. Yeah. You guys want this shirt? <laughs> let's, let's turn that three into a four guys yeah and also if you do sign up for my news newsletter you get instantly 20 percent off your first order just saying just saying or if you become an affiliate and you get approved you get 40 percent off that's the it fuck? <laughs> the <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's pretty much my spiel i'm down to take questions I love it. Yeah, we, we got some questions. Yeah, are, are you good for time? Because we're a little bit over. Um, yeah, I think I have another meeting. I don't think it's until later. later. Let me check. Cool. I have a coaching session later. Awesome. Okay, guys, we're about to jump into Yeah, we're fine. Okay, wait, I got plenty of time. Awesome. So if Amazing. you haven't got Appreciate your questions it. in yet, use the Ask a Question um, button at the bottom, and we're going to try and do some quick fire questions before we have to shoot off. 
Wonderful. Take away, Esther. So Angela is at the top and says, can you save time to talk about your course too? Thank you. Oh, my course. Yeah. So um, I run an account called Women of Illustration, which is less about me and much more about female voices and really just trying to empower more female artists in the community by sharing their work, by getting them on my podcast, Women of Illustration. And um, every month when you sign up on our Patreon, you get a bonus lecture. So right now, if you sign up, you get even more information on a deep dive of how to find your niche and grow on Instagram. If you guys are interested, these are what I call bonus lectures. So yeah. I have all these different tiers on Patreon. You can support us for a dollar, make me holler. If you uh, pay us $10, you get a feature in our stories, which can usually get you anywhere from 50 to 200 followers. And then if you get featured in our grid, you get, it's $50 and you can typically get anywhere from 200 to 1,000 followers. Of course, depends on your quality of content. I cannot <laughs> guarantee anything. I do not run the Instagram gods, but I'm I kind of you, wish you did though. I, I'm, I'm, I wish I did too. I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing you probably have to be a woman. Oh, yeah, you have to be. You have to be a woman. Oh, sorry. So cool. sorry, fellas. <laughs> you have to be a woman identifying artist. Um, but yeah, so you can get featured for that fifty dollars, and then as a bonus, you get these lectures. So technically, all these lectures and courses are free. Yeah. So, and um, then the, the next course I'll be doing is about this subject. Why can I just now imagine Tom like dressing up in a wig and trying to pass himself off just so that he can get involved in this? Oh, thank you for your Instagram likes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you could sign up to get the course. You just won't get featured in a women of illustration. So it's like, there's that. Um, no but um, if you're a lettering artist, then I have a patron that's open to all genders where I have a, I call it my secret art diary podcast, which well, is like right. a new episode every week that talks a lot about my feelings and behind the scenes of what I'm doing. And that's just a dollar a month. And that's at Letter Shop. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because Deborah just asked, do you ever sleep? How do you schedule your time to do so many projects? Uh, I sleep all the time, mostly. Mostly sleep and eat. Can you tell? <laughs> I love sleep. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Um, I mean, keep in mind, I am full-time freelance, and I do have some help. My boyfriend helps me quite a bit with social media and now customer service, so that way I don't have to answer questions like, where's my shirt? <laughs> he can do that for me, which is really neat. I'm kind of a dick. <laughs> to be honest I think it's because I'm working on so many other things but I have a really structured outline to my day like I have dedicated like art and marketing days because sometimes I get so lost in like writing content and helping my ambassador program and getting things on my patreon and doing my podcast that I forget to like actually draw stuff um so I think forcing myself to have that balance having a to-do list that's really really structured and yeah. actually taking those things off and I like treat myself to like cookies. Like every time I finish a task, I get a cookie. <laughs> Let us recommend uh, Monday if you use it. Monday.com. Oh. Yeah, Monday.com. Amazing. Oh, I've never heard of it. Your projects and to do this. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I just want to quickly also Engage say, I did see in the comments, if you are joining us on this live stream late or you didn't catch the beginning of it or whatever it is, and then we're, the we're, night, we're fuming, right? Then we're really angry with we you. Are, we are living. You should have been here from the start. You should leave right now. <laughs> no. Okay. No, um, we're not saying that. <laughs> once the live stream is over, there will be a replay which will be available forevermore. And um, so you can come back to this link and rewatch it here, or it will be over on our YouTube channel and the learn section of our website. So there'll be three places for you to find us. And um, if you missed the beginning or you're only catching it now or whatever it is, once the live stream is finished, then you can come and watch the replay. And I highly recommend it because there have been numerous knowledge bonds dropped throughout this session. And you can go back and check all your notes off and make sure you didn't miss anything. <laughs> I love um, how you guys can tell when I look at my notes because my screen will get brighter when I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> um, Rachel says, do you ever have to deal with people or companies copying your work? And if so, how do you deal with it? Uh, it happens all the time. Um, just yesterday, a girl took my pastor and sent judgment art and decided to paint it on a wooden weed box with lots of goodies. And it was a part of a giveaway that she was doing with like three other major brands and the weed and like the cannabis industry. Is it normally that your followers notify you? And they're like, yeah. What's going mm -hmm. Yeah. So someone sent me a note. I went ahead and I looked at it and she did a really bad job. <laughs> Of painting it and it felt so bad because like the post was doing so well she had so many comments like it, it would have done really well for her so i messaged her i'm like hey uh 
like someone notified me that you're stealing my work without my permission. I know you probably found this image on Google and didn't know any better, but I don't need you to remove it. She ignored me. So I then I went ahead and reported her for copyright infringement and then Instagram took it down in about 30 minutes. Hmm. Well, that's good. But, nice. Like Instagram normally quite slow, I thought. Yeah. So sometimes Instagram's on your side, guys. Yeah. Very rarely, but sometimes. Very, very <laughs> rarely. I've, yeah. I've seen some like really messed up stuff on there. There was a video of like some gruesome, horrible, like violent act. Yeah. And I, I reported it and I'm then happy. they just got back and they were like, we consider it's okay. Yeah, I've had like, that. Is it like, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so that is the next question. Do you want to take this one, SJ? Yes, so, so I can't actually get as close to the screen as I used to be able to, so <laughs> let me just come in a little bit more here. Uh, so Jerka says, I sell jewelry for stretched ears. How can I build my umbrella topics? Do I have to break the jewelry down into topics or is it just stretched ear jewelry, my topic umbrella? Yeah, so you don't have to just pick one subject matter. It could be, I think three is a good max to keep in mind. And keep in mind, like also, like if you're interested in all these three things, then they're probably more connected than you think they are. You know what I mean? Like my three things, I always like make a joke. Like I smoke a lot of weed and therefore I get the munchies and I eat a lot of food and now I'm plus size. And then all of that plus size and smoking weed gives me paranoia. So then I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little joke. But yeah, I don't get anxious from weed. If anything, it medicates my anxiety. So again, full circle. Um, so like, just try to go ahead and like what I normally recommend to my students is try one niche for 30 days. Because I want to test out a few things. One, do you even fuck like doing that thing for 30 days? Like you'll definitely know by then. Yeah. Also, are you able to come up with enough ideas that are under that subject matter? Was that subject matter too niche? Can you broaden it out a little bit? And also sometimes doing research, like stop following your direct competitors and instead follow curated pages that talk about that same subject matter. Cause you're going to get so many ideas from like the memes that they post and the tweets and sometimes even the captions and what their audience is commenting. Like yeah. so many of my like quotes and stuff are actually things I've read from people's comments. Yeah. So it's like, like, like people are geniuses. You just got to find them. <laughs> I, I regularly love uh, the comment section. Like, People are hilarious in there. They're insightful in there. Like I, I go through it so often. Like there was a, a post recently where I actually started crying laughing because it was on Piers Morgan's Instagram. If you guys want to go check it out? There was him, Amanda Holden, and Simon Cow. Simon Cow's lost a bunch of weight, but he's got these giant veneer teeth in, which look really weird. And there's about 300 comments just like saying he looks like you eat an apple through a letterbox and that kind of thing and all of these remarks and I'm like, oh my god this is savage yeah. but like kind of hilarious people also don't time. think that people will ever read the comments really if they're, but if they do down. there's individual comments from, like hundreds of likes yeah just because everyone does that but, like, like naturally you have conversations not really thinking about who's going to pay attention and see them and then all of a sudden it's like this it, massive combo <laughs> it's it's why like in every comment section you get the memes of uh, michael jackson eating the popcorn yeah and just here for the comments yeah right? yeah mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so next up we have, um, how do you handle the first dibs method with your most loyal customers and these better subscribers? Um, is there an option with your e-commerce tools that allows you to enter in an email list which provides these users with early access for a day or two? Oh, so you just go ahead and like, like let's say Squarespace, you can go ahead and just not have the, the page linked, mm -hmm. right? Like it doesn't show up in your menu um, or you can password protect it. Sure. Right, but you could just send a newsletter out and be like, "Oh, it's like, like weed rules is the password," and then they can get in there. Yeah, so it's pretty easy to give them easy access, and most people aren't gonna like hack your website to get the page. Like, no one cares that much. <laughs> Typically, if someone wants to hack it, they're gonna hack it. Like, just let them. <laughs> um, Sam CK says, "I design and sell greeting cards. I'm fearing that it's on its way out. What are your thoughts?" Yeah, I don't think paper goods are the best. I've never had a lot of good experience with them. Friends that have also made paper goods don't do very well. It's just people don't feel the need to buy greeting cards anymore. Like I personally haven't bought a greeting card since I was like forced to when I was like 10, when it was Mother's okay. Day. <laughs> uh, so I think it's just something like, if you're the kind of person who often buys greeting cards for people, then obviously there's a need out there and there's more people like you. But if you're not the kind of person who buys your own product, then why are you making that product? You know what I mean? Like, don't buy the things that you think your audience likes. Buy the things that you wished existed that you could own personally. Yeah. I, I was having this conversation the other day, actually. I don't know if this is going to sound really, like, ageist, but, like, my mum, for example, loves 
cards and like cards are a big thing for her. If I don't get her cards, she's gonna be pissed at me. Like she likes cards to be four pages long with loads of beautiful words in and like if That's I don't really like pop out. Yeah, and if I don't <laughs> deliver, she's like, mm, thanks. Like, you know, she loves it. Whereas yeah. I'm like, nah, it don't get me a card, I'm not really worried. And yeah. I don't know if it's because like cards back then were you would receive a card in the post and it'd be yeah, really exciting. Yeah. Do you know I, what I mean? I'm pretty sure my mum appreciated that text on Mother's Day. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like I don't know, like I would never make greeting cards because I don't buy them. But yeah. if like you're a part of that demographic and you're really interested in greeting cards, then there's probably a bunch of free content you could be creating to attract those people who enjoy getting greeting cards too. But you can't just make greeting cards and have all of your uh, posts on Instagram be promotional and expect people to buy it. Like you have to be doing them a favor for them to do you a favor back to buy your stuff. Okay, makes sense. Um, a couple of people were asking, and this might have to be the final question, guys, um, how to protect your work. Is there anything you can do apart from just like please it when it gets flagged up? I mean, you can definitely like copyright it, like go through the actual legal channels and copyright your content. But like still like someone, let's say like um, a couple months ago, someone like le legitimately stole the past joints, not judgment uh, graphic and turned it into a t-shirt before I did. And that was actually a huge motivation for me to make that t-shirt because I like that. I'm like, I'm gonna let these people fucking make money on my design before I get to like, no, but they were in Indonesia. And typically when you're working with people who are in, not in the United States or the UK or like a major first world country, it's really hard to do yeah. any sort of legal action against them. Yeah. So I went ahead and did the same thing. Like, okay, I DM them. I let them know there was obviously a language barrier. Um, I waited. I gave them a courtesy. I sent them an email. I sent them a cease and desist. You do not need a lawyer to send a cease and desist. Anyone can send one, just so you guys know that. Um, they still didn't respond. And so then I had to resort to social shaming. <laughs> uh, Which, I think I remember this. Yeah. Stories. <laughs> yeah, and so their account got like flooded because they because what they had done is they printed it. It was really beautiful, by the way. It was like oversized print. They custom designed the T-shirt. They had really beautiful models wearing this. Like they put fucking money into this product, all because a junior designer didn't know any better and found that image on Google and thought it was okay to use. Like, did you hear back after the shaming or not? Yeah, they go, stop, please, stop. Oh, no. <laughs> Funny that, though, isn't it? How that seems to be the only way. Like, I, gave, I warned you. Like, I try to, so it's like, <laughs> it sucks that sometimes that's your only option, especially if it's like, like I said, like you can't reach to them legally. But not everyone also can afford the legal fees that go into actually having to take someone to court and get like any loss of profit, especially if it's a major brand. But what you can do in terms, like there's definitely a space in between like social shaming and just DMing where yeah. you can send them a fine. You know what I mean? Like you could send them an invoice being like, hey, if you would like to purchase the usage rights to this artwork so you could actually use it legally, this is what this costs. Mm -hmm. And if you're not gonna pay me my usage rights, then I'm gonna then I'm actually gonna take you to court and it's gonna cost a hell of a lot more money than these usage rights cost. Yeah, like, like so you don't need to leak a lot of money yourself on the lawyer. To mm -hmm. those messages. Yeah, you really don't like anyone can send an invoice. I like, and I've been on the other end of that when I worked at a, a website development company, and I had accidentally used an image from Flickr that I thought was okay for public use, but apparently it wasn't. And that photographer went ahead and sent my company a twelve hundred dollar bill for for the usage rights. Did you have to? Pay the thing. They have to pay. It, yeah, they paid the it. Sorry. I didn't have to pay it. They, they were like, "We should take it out of your paycheck." I'm like, "If you do, I'm going to leave right now because I don't got that <laughs> money." <laughs> so they ended up they negotiated the price down but they ended up paying it it was my bad but i'm just saying like it works yeah you know what i mean yeah. so yeah. like there, there, there's those options without having to call a lawyer or officially copyright your content just keep in mind like if there's a public stamp of it like oh i posted on instagram this day and then like two months later it pops up on a t-shirt like obviously they stole it from you you know yeah, yeah. um this has been amazing. One of my favorite sessions ever. Yeah, Would you agree? I agree. Yeah. I'm glad you two could meet as well. I know. I feel like I could just talk to you for hours. <laughs> I'm uh, definitely excited to turn my air conditioner back on. I will say that. Yeah, we had to. Also, nobody so, uh, even noticed. I'm really annoyed about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's been four of us on this call. If you look in the bottom right, you the screen. This nervous little fellow. <laughs> I'm really like, I thought that would be the first thing that they'd be like, oh my god, look, look at that. <laughs> I know, I even moved my camera for it. They've been too busy writing, yeah, true. Dr drowning in all the notes <laughs> like me. Um, <laughs> everyone wants you to be a re regular guest. I've seen that mentioned several times. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised Carl is feeling this chat because this is so perfect for him, but also so many more of you on guests.
interesting. Carl, did you um, know about Gina before today's hangout or not? Let yeah, us know. Right. I didn't. I didn't know if you'd uh, already like followed each other or whatever. I'm just not showing up in the frame. Hold it. There he is. Yay. <laughs> 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 he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gina, if you had to leave the lovely people here with like one piece of advice because you've, you've shared like hundreds of things it feels like in this session um but if i'm a young designer i, I want to kind of do something similar to you what's like one soundbite that you think is the most key thing they should focus on make the things you wished existed i can't tell you it's like the best advice and the things that you wish existed not the things that you think your audience will buy not the things that you saw like five other lettering artists draw this week but the things that like make the clothes you wish you could wear make the posters that would actually help you and motivate you make you feel good about yourself in your home make the enamel pins you wish you could fucking deck out your jean jackets and hats with like because if it's something that is relatable to you it's going to be relatable to a hell of a lot of other people too that is a good answer. That is so good. Like, it sounds so <laughs> Have you done this before? when you say it out loud. <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, Dina, I, I want to give it up. In fact, most of the team have gone home because it's like, <laughs> let's yeah. do it. Come on, everyone, let's <laughs> give it up for Dina. <laughs> Clapping emojis in the chat, um, please. Yeah, everyone, please give it up in the chat, Dina. Thank you so much for giving so generously for your time and advice. Like, you're always a superstar, but I feel like you're on fire today. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm excited to eat some food and I'm glad that you guys were inspired and I helped. So please uh, follow me on Instagram, you guys, and sign up for my newsletter. And you can um, get discounts. What, what would you like us to link up? Like your Instagram's below your website. Would that be helpful? Uh, let's do the lettershop.com slash subscribe. Okay, let's set that up. So that way, guys, so that way it's a landing page. Can you can try not to get in space in the camera. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm kind of balancing here on the floor. <laughs> um, lettershop.com. Okay. Hey, you guys can get wallpapers every week and 20% off clothes. It's really cool. I don't suppose you've got any maternity t shirts, have you, Dina? No, but I do have some shirts that go up to 6X. Pretty sure it'll fit. <laughs> cool, guys. I put the link below this video. Please go and subscribe. Like this is just a, a little taste into Dina's whole world. So she gives so much value, and so much awesome stuff over on her site. Go sign up. It's more than worth it. We only endorse stuff we fully, fully believe in, and I definitely believe in what Dina's putting out. Mm. Thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing. Thanks to everyone in the chat for joining us on the session today, and we will see you same time next week. Thanks for the warm welcome, Dina. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.